Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, I thank you for joining me. And if it's not, thank you for joining me again. So let's do a dollar store acrylic pour, shall we? I went into my local Dollar Tree. They have really amped up their, their art game. I'll tell you, they have everything there. Wooden objects to pour over. They have canvases, squeeze bottles acrylic paints, stir sticks, your cups, your tablecloths, whatever you need, right? And, you know, a lot of times we focus on the better quality paints, but who says these aren't good? So let's give them a try. And for the first time ever, I'm going to try to use Mod Podge as a pouring medium. Mod Podge essentially is glue and water. And as a lot of you know, acrylic pouring can be done with a glue and water uh, base to your paints. So I figured why not? Let's try it out. I'm gonna let you see how it dries. We're gonna go through the, the total process here, okay? So let me set up and I will be right back. Here is some yellow. And here is some white. So the body's about the same on both of them. So that I would consider almost a soft body paint, which means that you're not going to have to lot, mix a lot of medium in them to thin them out. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my little shot cups, 24 for a dollar. I'm going to line them up and we are going to mix these paints together really quick. I'm going to wipe this canvas off and then we're going to use it to do an acrylic pour to see how they behave. And then we'll let it dry and we'll see how it dried and if the Mod Podge works great, uh, it'll be great. That'll be another alternative for you to do this type of art. All right, so I have the colors of the rainbow here, all Dollar Tree paints. The white is Dollar Tree also. What I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge. And I'm going to add about the same amount that I have paint in the cup. So just cover the surface. The exact amount doesn't, it doesn't have to be an exact amount is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to have to take off my beautiful new copper gloves that my beautiful viewer Sherry sent me. They feel so good on my hands. I don't want to remove them, but I don't want to get paint on them either. So I'm just kind of covering the surface of the paint. And then whatever's left in this bottle, I'm going to take and dump into my white. Now the rest will be thinned with water and water only. If you want to add a couple of drops of silicone to your colors, you can. Just make sure you leave one of those colors uh, untouched. Don't add any silicone to it because you need to have a color or two without the silicone in it to react with the silicone. It'll work best that way. So usually people will leave the white virginal, we'll say. So now I have that all in there. What I'm going to do is just give them a mix with my dollar store sticks. And we're going to see how thick they are. Do they need water? Which I can tell they definitely do. Okay? So let me mix this into all of them and then we'll do the water part together. Okay, so I went and put some water in one of my Dollar Tree bottles because you don't want to add too much at all at one time, okay? You may add too much. There is such a thing. So I'm going to put in a cup, just a couple of drops at a time until I reach the desired consistency. So I just continued to add a few drops of water at a time until I reach that consistency where it's flowing off the stick leaving a slight mound on the surface and then disappearing pretty quickly. All 
And I will show you that consistency. Okay, it flows off the stick, it leaves a little mound. And then this is disappears. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all of my paints, and I will be right back when I'm done. So now I'm going to add a drop of silicone to all but two colors, the red and the white. You need to leave one or two of those colors virginal so that they can react with the paints that have the silicone in them. If you want small little tiny cells, mix it up a lot. If you want bigger cells, just a couple of swirls. Using the dustpan that I bought from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to put some of the colors in there and just pour them on the canvas. I'm not trying to create a design with the dustpan. I'm just pouring the colors out in a ribbon fashion, we'll say, and then I'm going to tilt it around and swipe them. This is this whole canvas testing and paint testing from the Dollar Tree is not about creating art. It's just to see if you can create art with these types of products and what it looks like. What's the pigment like in these paints and, you know, all of that. So I'm going to continue filling up this dustpan. We're going to do the piece of art and then I'm going to give you what I feel my opinion is on these colors and these products from the Dollar Tree. I will tell you this, that the Mod Podge will make the colors look a little more pastelish until it dries. Once it dries, they come back to their original form. Um, they, the paints really didn't act too bad. Were they as pigmented as my golden paints? No. Are they passable? Yes. So here we go. I'm just lining the puddle of paint up with the corner of my canvas and I'm just going to kind of move the dustpan along the canvas nice and slow letting the paint flow out onto the canvas. What's really fun about using something to pour paint out like a dustpan is that you can kind of control the pattern and you know, you could swirl your hand in an S shape or in a figure eight and really get creative with the ribbons. But for this, as I said, I just wanted to see how the dustpan worked for pouring out paint, which I thought it worked fine. So now I'm just going to tilt this paint around and cover the entire canvas. And then what I'm going to do is come in with a paper towel dry paper towel. I'm going to put some of my white paint that does not have silicone in it up at the top of the canvas. I'm going to lay the edge of the paper towel in the white paint and then I'm going to pull that white paint down over the top of all of that color. I will then pick up the paper towel and swipe in the reverse direction. I'm not going to add more white paint, but what it's going to do is bring more of the color forward to the surface. Now to get the silicone to react, you need some type of a heat source. Either a torch or a heat gun will help the silicone oil rise to the surface, creating your cells. I gotta say, the Mod Podge is pretty impressive. It held up pretty good. And, you know, I've been doing this long enough to know that 
this is going to dry perfectly fine. I'm still going to show it to you dry, but uh, I can tell you right now that Mod Podge worked pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, how does it hold up with other techniques like the Dutch pours, stuff like that? You know, that's just something you would have to test. But uh, as far as something like a swipe and, um, you know, probably your basic acrylic pours, like flip cups, stuff like that, worked. It would work great, I think. And you know what? I'm sure somebody out there has used it for a pouring medium probably for a long time. I never have. And the whole purpose was to show you, you know, that you can do a painting from the dollar store if you wanted to. Um, I did lose a lot of my red and yellow and um, orange, but it's okay, you know. I wasn't trying to make a piece of art. Like I told you, I just wanted to see how this did. So when I come back, I'm going to show you the dry result. Before I do, however, though. I want to show you this coaster I made without using resin. That's right. No resin whatsoever. And let me just explain briefly to you how I did that. So no resin coasters. Wouldn't that be a great world? I mean, there's so many times when we do coasters, if we use the wrong type of resin or we don't let it cure long enough, or we use the wrong type of varnish that the hot cup is sticking, the cold cup is, is sticking, you're, they're leaving dents, yada, yada, yada. So I was watching a video by Boom Jam, and she was making coasters by dipping them into some Boom Gel and then letting them dry and then peeling them the the back of the coaster off and then you saw the design through right so i said to myself that is actually a really cool idea and i believe her name is cass i'm going to link her video in the description below but what i started thinking about were acrylic skins never mind trying to do it with the fluid paint even though you can do that skins so Artists Till Death, who you hear me talk about once in a while, they do sell those clear, I don't know if it's um, plexiglass or acetate, clear coasters. I have some right here that I had gotten from them. Uh, in different shapes, there's also an ornament one that I, I don't have any more left. So what these are is you take and peel off this this one side okay and i may have yeah i have one peeled here so this one is peeled you peel off this one side do your artwork let it dry whatever and then you peel off this side and it's see-through okay art is a rock so i started thinking to myself how about using skins to make coasters, right? So I have some skins and I'm gonna tell you how I got these big beautiful skins right now. So these were acrylic pours that I had done to demonstrate in a video how something worked. And I wasn't going to try to sell them, so I said, let me repurpose them. So what I actually did was, this is a canvas frame, believe it or not, by a four by, for a four by 12. These were on here and stapled. I don't know which way they were on, but they were on one way or the other. They were attached to this frame, okay? And what I did was I took out all the staples. Well, I didn't take, I ripped it out. I cut off the sides because they were a mess. And I'm sitting here saying, how did this fit on here? I forgot. I cut the sides off because they were just messy. So I ripped it out of the staples, cut off the sides, and just kept the front of it. I repurposed everything. This is going to be a piece of art one day. Mark my words. So... <laughs> Now I have these big, beautiful canvas skins, not 
paint skins that are you peel off of your plastic that you know rip or you might have problems with it nice thick canvas skins so what I did was this I took one of these guys I found the area let's see that I liked I want to use let's use this one okay I found an area that I really liked which would be probably right about here I did not however do my tracing to cut it out on this side what I did was I flipped it over and kind of got a feel for where it was and just went like this all right even though I can't see where I'm tracing I'm still going to get some of that design so I just traced it out like so cut it out just like this doesn't have to be perfect we could always trim it afterwards afterwards and then what I did was some clear glue if you want to get even fancier you can use a little sparkle glue just put a little bit on don't need much make sure you get the, the corners good and all of that okay you just want to thoroughly and evenly Brush it onto the surface. No worries, the paint will not bleed or anything like that. Once it's dry, it's permanent. And then you're gonna stick that side that you peeled down onto the surface. Now you're gonna stick the side that you peeled face down onto that glued surface then what you want to do is take something heavy and place it on top of there and let it dry when you peel the other side you're going to be seeing something like this and then you're just going to flip it over put some glue on and Finish cleaning up, clean up your edges. Um, put a cork on the back. I get my cork on either Amazon or Hobby Lobby sells it. $3.49 for six of them. Thought it was such a cool idea. So let me show you though the other ones that I did. So here's one I just did. Like I said, this is an ornament one where I just did an acrylic pour on the front and um it didn't come through on the back this one it did come through on the back and how i got it to come through on the back was don't mind the scratch this was just a tester was i put some paint down and while it was just sitting there selling up i was taking a skewer and kind of you know playing around with the the paints and sure enough it did show up so there's a lot more testing to do with this because uh we can make some absolutely gorgeous coasters even if you wanted to get a cheap canvas like that dollar store canvas that i just used and do a beautiful pour on it just to be able to remove it and use the skin for beautiful coasters that would be another cheap way i thought this was a really cool idea that she had and i just know it will work for so much more i'm going to try to do a bloom uh using them so we're gonna see what happens i mean hopefully it'll all work out for the best now this is nowhere near dry obviously i just did it with you but I just want to try to peel this and show you what it's going to look like. And another thing is, is 
the whole the whole purpose is to not use resin but let's say you like to use resin like me you can take one of these and use resin on them do like a, a swirly pattern or something and use them for something like that just flip it over the 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 thing that I like about this is the the surface where the cup sits is not actual resin so it cuts down on all those annoying features that resin has to offer but no one says that you can't do resin art on one side and use this side as the top for your drink and uh or even taking a posca pen or markers and doing some zentangle work on there or mandala dotting on one side and then using that other side for the surface right so i'm going to show you what this one's going to look like when it's done there you go so erica was so kind to offer my viewers a discount if you're interested in those you're going to go to artisttilldeath.com and then you're going to go to uh, the category section and look for pouring. I think it's clear pouring surfaces or all pouring surfaces and you'll see them in there. They come in a 10 pack, I believe. So anyway, let's get back to seeing how our other painting dried. So here it is. It's all dry. Um, I didn't use tape, I just laid it down on my tabletop uh, cover that I use. So it's literally glued to that piece of paper there, but it's dry. Paints held up fine. Uh, they worked fine. Are they as pigmented as the better brands? No, they are not. Can you do an acrylic pour with them? Yes, you can. So I hope this video was helpful to some of you or all of you, hopefully. And... Uh, yeah, you know, if you're just starting out and you need to do this a cheaper way, give it a shot. The Dollar Tree paints and the Mod Podge, you're good to go. So just a few announcements before I leave. Uh, I'm going to be releasing a new series where I use unique backgrounds to do acrylic pours on. I hope you join me for that. It's going to be a lot of fun, very different, and hopefully unique. So if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell to be notified of all future videos. If you liked today's video or it helped you in any way, please click the like button and comment in the comments area. And also one other thing, July 22, I will be in Florida alongside Canela Sirocco Art teaching a workshop. If you are interested in attending, please send us an email at fluidartescape at gmail.com for more information. It's going to be a grand old time. We're going to paint. We're going to learn. We're going to eat. We're going to laugh. Just cannot wait to meet some of you. So if you're interested send us an email. And as always, I want to wish you a beautiful day, tell you that I love you, and happy pouring.